Hello, I have been asked by the editors of Gastroenterology to present the results of our recent manuscript entitled The Differential Importance of GIP versus GLP-1 Receptor Signaling for Beta Cell Survival in Mice. The GI tract plays a critical role in the sensing, absorption, and disposal of ingested nutrients via multiple neural and endocrine relay mechanisms. A classic role for gut endocrine cells in the facilitation of nutrient disposal is facilitated by the incretin effect, whereby the presence of nutrients in the gut triggers the release of gut peptides from enteroendocrine cells. These gut hormones then directly enhance the release of insulin from the pancreatic beta cell. The incretin peptides are exemplified by glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, known as GIP, and glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1. GIP and GLP-1 exert their actions through structurally related G-protein-coupled receptors, which exhibit considerable amino acid homology and utilize overlapping signal transduction pathways in pancreatic beta cells. However, although GIP and GLP-1 both stimulate glucose-dependent insulin secretion, they exert different activities beyond the beta cell. GIP promotes lipid accumulation and resistance secretion from adipocytes and chronic GIP receptor activation impairs insulin action, action following high fat feeding in rodents. In contrast, GLP-1 inhibits glucagon secretion and reduces the rate of gastric emptying. GLP-1 also induces satiety and sustained GLP-1 receptor activation is associated with weight loss. The actions of GLP-1 on the pancreatic beta cell have received much attention. GLP-1 stimulates beta cell replication and enhances beta cell survival, resulting in the expansion of beta cell mass. Conversely, the elimination of GLP-1 receptor signaling in mice leads to defects in islet development and enhanced susceptibility to beta cell apoptosis. Although GIP promotes beta cell proliferation and inhibits apoptosis in islet cell lines, whether the GIP receptor is similarly important for the proliferation and survival of beta cells in vivo remains unclear. In this study, we compared the efficacy of pharmacologic activation of single incretin receptors using GLP-1 receptor and GIP receptor agonists versus the dual activation of both incretin receptors using the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 or DPP-4 inhibitor citagliptin. These were administered to promote beta cell survival in wild type mice given the beta cell toxin streptozotocin or strep. In complementary experiments, we assessed the importance of endogenous GIP receptor signaling for beta cell survival in studies using mice harboring a genetic inactivation of the GIP receptor. The administration of the GLP-1 receptor agonist Extendin-4 for 7 or 60 days improved blood glucose and insulin levels, reduced islet cell apoptosis, and also augmented pancreatic insulin content and beta cell mass in wild-type mice given strep. In contrast, treatment with the GIP receptor agonist, agonist DALA2 GIP, failed to improve these parameters under identical experimental conditions. Furthermore, unlike previous results with the GLP-1 receptor knockout mouse, GIP receptor knockout mice did not in exhibit any increased susceptibility to strep-induced beta cell damage and diabetes. To determine if more modest elevation of of active plasma incretins is also associated with protection from beta cell injury, we administered the DPP-4 inhibitor, citagliptin, to wild-type mice given strep. Citagliptin reduced hemoglobin A1c levels and increased plasma and pancreatic levels of insulin after strep administration. Citagliptin also reduced the levels of activated caspase 3 in wild-type, but not in islets from DERCO mice demonstrating that the incretin receptors transduce the cytoprotective actions pursuant to DPP-4 inhibition. In conclusion, although both GIP and GLP-1 stimulate glucose-dependent insulin secretion under non-diabetic conditions, there are functionally important differences in the pharmacological and physiological roles of the incretin receptors in diabetic beta cells in vivo.